Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and in today's video we're going to be wiring control valves, specifically a modulated control valve and testing it. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. In today's video, I have a real treat for you all. We're going to be going over the wiring for a modulating control valve along with testing it. In front of us, we have a inch and a half ball valve. And on top of it, we have a control actuator made by Belimo. And this is a modulating valve. In today's video, we're going to be testing a Belimo actuator valve. And the model number is ARB24-SR. This is a non-spring return, 24 volt AC-DC actuator. It's also two to 10 VDC and four to 20 MA. This type of actuator comes with four wires and we're gonna go deeper into detail with that. We have a black wire, red wire, white wire, and orange. Here I have a diagram for this specific actuator and it's the same wiring for the following model numbers. ARB24-SR, LRB24-SR, ARX24-SR, and LRX24-SR. Let's begin. All right, let's explain exactly what we're looking at here. So this part right here is our actual actuator. As I mentioned before, we had four wires. We had a black, red, white, and orange. So this is the wires coming off our actuator. Here, this represents a transformer, a 24 volt transformer. So we have whatever incoming voltage it is, but it gets stepped down to 24 volts AC. This is the AC transformer, right? So if we follow one wire from the transformer goes to black, which is terminal one, and that's gonna be our common. This second wire coming off our transformer is gonna go to our red wire, terminal two, and that's gonna be our hot wire. So between one and two, or red and black, we have straight 24 volts AC. Now we have two more wires. Let's go over the white wire. So if we look closely through here, we have a VDC slash MA control signal. Let's look closely. This is gonna be our input. The white wire is our input, two to 10, VDC. And then if we look at the orange wire, this is also a two to 10 VDC, but it's a feedback signal. As you look closely here, this is an output. So this is coming in through the white and it's coming out through the orange for some sort of feedback. When it comes to the 24 volts AC, it's straightforward. As far as the white wire, which we're gonna be using today, to modulate our valve using two to 10 volts DC. We have a positive and negative when it comes to DC. You look at positive, that's the wire that's gonna go to the white, terminal three or Y. Look at the negative. Your negative comes here on this large black line. So regardless if it's volts AC or DC, the negative all go back to the common, your black wire. In front of us here, this is an HVAC training board that I built and engineered myself. This is a representation of an air conditioner and we're gonna be using this to tap into our AC voltage. If we look closely right here, this is a step down transformer and this is what's gonna be supplying our 24 volts AC. Currently at the moment, there is no power going to this, so let's begin by supplying 120 volts to the circuit. I'm just gonna plug this in. And we now have 120 volts powering our transformer. And when I flip this switch to the on position, we're gonna have 24 volts leaving our transformer. First things first, we're gonna be applying 24 volts AC to this actuator. And as we saw in the diagram, that's gonna be between our black and red wire. So black, as you can see on the bottom, is our negative or common. And our red wire 
is gonna be our positive or our 24 volts AC. Here's our four wires. As you can see, our red, black, and white are stripped back, but not an orange. Our orange was our output, but we're gonna be focusing on our input, and that's the way we really control this valve. So what we're gonna do is connect our red and black right now to our power. So black is gonna go to common on our transformer, and the red is gonna go to 24 volts positive on our transformer. Here's our transformer. Here's our power coming in from the top, and this is our 24 volts leaving from the bottom. The green wire is gonna be our common, and the red is gonna be our positive. So you follow the red. As you can see, I actually wired a inline fuse here. So this point right here, right, is gonna be our hotline, our 24 volts. And then if you follow the green, it actually comes here, the second terminal, and that's gonna be our common. So we're simply gonna put our red wire to positive, 24 volts, and our black wire to common. An easy way for me to tap into this is gonna be by taking off these wire nuts, because I'm gonna be using some alligator clips. So here's our common, and here's our positive, 24 volts, common. Let's start with our 24 volts hotline and our positive. So we're gonna put an alligator clip here, and we're gonna send the other lead to our red wire, which is our positive. Next, I'm gonna take my next alligator clip and connect our common. And our common is gonna to go to our negative or our black wire coming off the actuator. Our red and black or our positive and negative are officially connected and therefore we have our 24 volt AC power supply going to this actuator. Next is our white wire, represented as the letter Y, and that is gonna be our input zero to 10 volts DC. So let's wire the white wire right now. Typically these type of controlled actuator valves are connected to some sort of BMS system, building management system. This is something where we have hardware controls integrated with software where the engineer of the building can control and monitor all the HVAC equipment through that. So to imitate or produce a DC voltage with variable voltages, I'll be using this piece right here. We have an input of 120 volts to 240 volts AC and our output is from DC 3 to 24 volts and we can adjust that. If so far anyone is finding this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. Don't forget to share this with your friends and colleagues. If you have any input on what kind of video I should do next, definitely leave a comment below and let's continue. Here is what the output looks like. And we have an adapter for that. Like this, we can connect physical wires to this. If you look closely, on the left is our positive and on the left is our negative. We're gonna connect our white wire or our Y wire coming from our actuator to the positive of our DC power supply. We now have our white wire from the actuator or terminal Y going to the positive on our DC power supply. We have one last connection to make. This right here is gonna be our negative and it's gonna go to the common of our 24 volt power supply. So the same wire where the black went, the negative where the DC is gonna go as well. I just ran a black wire to our negative connection and from our DC power supply, we're gonna run that back to the black wire on our 24 volt power supply, our common or our negative. So here's our black wire coming off the actuator. I'm just gonna take this off for a second and connect these two together. These two are now together and I'm gonna put my alligator clip back on it. And that's our common from the 24 volt transformer. To power our AC-DC converter in this situation is super simple. We just have a plug and we can connect that to any receptacle. We are currently in the off position for this DC controller. I'm gonna flip the switch and let's pay attention to the valve. If we look closely at our actuator, we can see this stem is 
aligned in parallel to our valve. In that position, we are open. Let's play close attention to the valve. As you can see, we can see through the other side and it's open. Once again, that stem is parallel with the valve body. Now, we need to understand how this actually works. When we turn the switch on and the power is applied, 24 volts will go directly to our red and black wire, our positive and negative. That would actually put the valve in its normal position. This is a normally closed valve. So right now there's gonna be no DC voltage, only AC. So as soon as you put the power on, you're gonna see that the 24 volts will close this. The little sound is the actuator moving. It takes a little while for it to close, but it will. Just pay close attention to the hole inside the valve. As you can see, we are almost halfway closed. As you can see, our stem is turning as well, and we are no longer parallel with the valve. As you can see, our stem is no longer parallel with the valve. We are crossed, meaning we are closed. And if we look inside, we can see we are officially fully closed. To the left, I have my DC power supply, and to the right, we can see the inside of our valve. So once we energize our transformer, 24 volts AC is gonna get sent to red and black, our negative and positive on our actuator. This is gonna force the valve into its normal position. These can be configured at the supply shop, at the manufacturer for either normally closed or normally open. This one is normally closed. So when we don't have any DC input, the valve will be closed as it is now. We have 24 volts AC, but no DC voltage, so we are fully closed. The way this works is that when we have no DC voltage or two volts DC, because this is a two to 10 DC actuator, two volts would be closed and 10 volts would be fully open. The way this modulates is that, let's say we're at two volts, we're fully closed. As we increase the voltage, the valve will open accordingly. So let's say we're at, let's see what's between two and 10. At about five, six volts, we should be in the halfway open position. So, as voltage increases on its way up to 10 volts DC, the valve will open accordingly. So let's pay attention to the valve. My power is now on. What I'm gonna do is set this to 10 volts DC and we're gonna watch it open. We're at 10.4 volts DC. You can hear the actuator. It's starting to open. We are about halfway open. It's gonna keep going. 2,000 years later. And we are almost fully open. So 10 volts, fully open. As we decrease the voltage DC, the valve will close accordingly. So with 10 volts DC, we are calling for either heating or cooling. Remember, this is used for fan coil units where we use either chilled water or hot water. So let's say we're calling for heat and we are a large difference from set point and room temperature. Let's say it's 70 degrees room, but we want it to go up to 75. Our controller, is gonna send volts to open this up all the way. As we get closer to the set point, this should modulate. 
This is all according to the control system that was built. So let's pay attention. I'm going to lower the DC voltage a bit. Let's see. Okay, here it's starting to go. Let's see where we get with, let's see, six volts. This is 5.96. Let's see where we're going to end up. It's not going to fully close because we're not at two volts DC. Let's see where it stops. As you can see, we are almost halfway closed and that is because of our DC input. If I lower it, see this only goes down to 3.48. It's going to continue to close. And if I turn this off, it's going to close fully. And that's because we killed our DC voltage. We are now officially closed as we brought down the DC voltage. So we have 24 volts AC constantly going to the red and black wire. And our white wire is going to be the positive from our DC controller. And that's going to modulate from 2 to 10 volts DC. And according to the DC voltage, it will open and close your valve accordingly. And that's the way this works. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. Don't forget to share this with your friends and colleagues. And I'll catch you all next time.